Hey guys and welcome to Feywood. So this is the final video of this costume project which has been a mammoth project. If you guys have been following all the videos you'll know all the bits and pieces that went into this costume. Largely a lot of learning for me because I've never done a lot of these things when it comes to actually making clothes. So it was a great learning opportunity for myself. Now I have some final bits and pieces that I needed to do on the costume um, and a lot of it was beadwork so I really wanted to do some nice beadwork on most of the costume. I don't go into a lot of detail with the filming of what I'm doing um, but suffice to say it's a lot of backstitch. Um, I've used like a topaz luster size 11 bead. Um, I've used a topaz 3mm check bead and I've used a check um, sew on cabochon that I've hauled before and that was like a matte metallic colour uh, and also a matte red colour for the bottom trim area. So Fizzy decided he needed to interrupt some of the beadwork. It was cuddle time. <laughs> so the beadwork went to one side and he was like, yep, it's time you focus on myself. <laughs> now part of this um, costume pattern that I've been doing, which is the Simplicity uh, 8363 pattern, is the armor pieces. Now they um, have all of the pattern pieces for the armor included in the pattern um, and it involves using foam. So I found the easiest way to, was to pin these pieces to the foam. Um, there's just enough thickness for me to kind of tack it down slightly just to do an outline of the pieces. They suggest in the pattern that you put these, um, like transpose them onto cardboard. I didn't have enough cardboard around and I was running out of time. So I just went straight onto the foam pieces. Now I was literally making these pieces the day before the Goblin Ball. So I was really strapped for time. So there was a few different armor pieces, one that went over the shoulder. Um, if I was using the full pattern there was a lot more to the shoulder armor but if you guys have been watching the videos you know that I made a dragon skull instead as part of my armor piece. But then I did use the very top piece um, of armor for the shoulder and then these side pieces that I'm drawing now. Um, they go on the hips. They're quite large armor pieces that sit on the overskirt. Now there was a few layers to these shoulder, uh, sorry, um, hip pieces I should say. There was a few pieces to the shoulder but I only used the one but the hip pieces had a couple of layers to it um, and decorative layers as well. So there was the big large piece um, and for the hip and then a decorative piece over the top and then um, a smaller sort of cap at the top of the armor that sits on top and then finally another decorative piece that was really designed to cover up the join um, which you'll see me connect the joins in a minute and you'll know a bit more what I'm talking about. 
So here I'm using the hot glue to connect these two joins and um, it basically adds a bit of shape to the armour. So the reason they've cut that little slice out is so that it will then um, make it a little bit more figure hugging to your hip shape. And um, once I was done with gluing all those pieces together, I used a tacky glue to glue the decorative piece on, but then I've used Mod, Pod, Mod Podge sorry, um, to coat them, which it said in the um, instructions you should use. Um, now, I did spray paint them with a um, Rust-Oleum uh, hammer forged um, metal paint. Um, unfortunately we had a bit of wind and they blew up and it got a little bit damaged and I was running out of time like literally I painted this on the day of the Goblin Ball. I was waiting for paint to dry hours before the Goblin Ball. So once that had dried-ish, because um, <laughs> honestly it was still tacky by the time I was getting ready, I did put my um, oil rubbed bronze on oh, oil rub bronze sorry my um rubbing waxes on which i had in bronze and gold and i've really focused the colors on the decorative pieces and just a little bit on the um, interior piece so that it really pops and you can really um appreciate the detail of the armor and then with the gold i've edged all of the detail pieces as well again to really make that pop so once all that was done and drying, um, I was creating some little trinkets to bring. Now, it's a customary thing on the night of the Goblin Ball, a lot of people will bring trinkets and they're just little keepsakes. They can be anything at all, um, something you've created, something you've bought, anything, and you just swap them with other people and it's just a really fun way to interact with people. Um, and particularly if you're wanting to be in uh, character, um, and you know I did that a little bit which was a bit new to me because I feel um, still a little bit new to being in a character um, but I did try to do it some people were quite receptive some people seemed a little bit uncomfortable with me being in character but it was a good experience for me so this is a close-up look at what the costume looks like. I've dressed my headless lady up now in the costume. So she will now be gracing my backdrop with this costume that I wore on the night. You can see the headpiece there just sitting on the top of the neck corset. And here is the dragon skull I created. Make sure you do check out the tutorials if you're wanting to see how I made the dragon skull or the um, headpiece. And if you want to have a bit of a laugh, check out the ones where I'm trying to create the actual pieces to this pattern. Um, but you can see what you can create when you use this simplicity pattern. Um, it was in conjunction with fire firefly path and it's a, an excellent costume i'm really gl glad that i gave it a try i will definitely be making some more costumes in the future and sewing a lot more now that i feel a lot more comfortable with it so i hope you guys have enjoyed this series to see how this costume came about Stay tuned for the Goblin Ball video, which should be coming to either next week or the week after. Subscribe if you want to see all of that, and I'll see the rest of you next time in Feywood. Bye, guys.